What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and today we have some epic history TV's content for you and we're doing some more Napoleon series and we're back at it with the Napoleon's Revenge Wag Ram. 1809 we really enjoyed the last episode um <sighs> napoleon got a bit defeated and he's not a bit happy he um, lost his three commands three, three of his, his best commanders. commanders all taken out yeah. because he just got overconfident and yeah. he still didn't consider that the army they might have improved that, and yeah, adapted. Like, oh god yeah. It's, it's very interesting, but we're really enjoying yeah. this content over here. If you have any more suggestions, please drop it in the comment box down below. A link for Epic History TV's content will be in the comments box down below as well. And if you're liking our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But we're just going to jump straight into this one. Let's do this. I want to see how the French Epic man History TV yeah. Revenge. History March collaboration. In May 1809, the Austrians had defeated Napoleon's army in the bloody Battle of Aspern. His enemies took heart. After years of French okay. military dominance, it seemed the tide was turning at last. Three weeks later, mm -hmm. Pope Pius VII excommunicated Napoleon for annexing papal land. Another okay. propaganda coup for his enemies. But in the wake of its victory, Austria hesitated, not sure whether to seek peace or continue the war. Oh, well, they're a bit worried Napoleon already. <laughs> responded with a hurricane of activity. He summoned reinforcements to join him near Vienna. The Army of Italy, under his stepson Eugène de Bournay, and 11th Corps under Marshal Marmont, mm. who'd together driven Archduke John's Austrian army out of North Italy, as well as Marshal Bernadotte's Saxon 9th Corps. Napoleon's army grew from 90,000 to a massive 164,000 men, yeah, 544 guns, yeah. oh to take on Charles's army of 128,000 and 414 guns. Oh, you are pissed. Six weeks after his first attempt had ended in defeat, Napoleon ordered his army to cross the river once more. Mm. This time his engineers had built solid bridges across the Danube yeah, to ensure there was no repeat of the disasters of Aspern. Well done. Yeah. For the French army, Napoleon declared, the Danube no longer exists. The stage was set for the largest battle yet seen in European history. Ooh. It's a good job you're not any taller. Napoleon to his staff officer whose helmet was knocked off by a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> On the evening of the 4th of July, in heavy rain, the French began crossing from the island of Lobo, <laughs> not towards the devastated villages of Aspern and Essling, but right. east towards Gross Enzersdorf, which was soon ablaze from French shells. Oh. Yeah. Archduke Charles had left only a small advance guard to delay the French. By dawn, General Massena's 4th Corps and Oudinot's 2nd Corps were driving those troops back, winning space for the French army to deploy. This a big old Napoleon was ready oh to Lord. begin his advance across six miles of flat cornfields towards the main Austrian position an escarpment known as the Wagram, 100 metres behind the Rusbach stream. As General Lasalle's light cavalry and Massena's 4th Corps swung left to guard the flank, Boudinot's nice. 2nd Corps and Davout's 3rd Corps advanced towards the Wagram. Bernadotte's Saxon Corps and Eugène's Army of this Italy is insane. filled the centre. This is mental. This is this is what happens when you have the disposal PM. of men yeah. and he has sure of the what, enemy's the strength. Napoleon ordered a full-scale assault against the Wagram Plateau. Okay. But his troops met determined Austrian resistance along the line. By dusk, the Saxon 9th Corps had pushed into the village of Deutsch Wagram. The Saxon infantry wore white uniforms, like the Austrians. And as darkness fell, were mistaken for the enemy and fired on by friendly units. The Saxons panicked and fled with heavy wow. losses. 
Napoleon's attempt at a quick breakthrough had failed. That night, both armies slept in the open, while Charles and Napoleon planned their next moves. That's crazy. It's insane. No. <sighs> On the second day, Napoleon planned for Davout's third it, corps to lead the attack. It's like it's shift rolling up the Austrian yeah. flank, while his it's, other corps pinned down the enemy with local attacks. I'm just trying to like to the think of trying fury, to keep up with all he of learned this. That yeah. overnight, so without orders, Marshal Bernadotte had withdrawn his battered Saxons from Adakla, which the Austrians now occupy. Oh, Adakla was a crucial strong point in the center of the battlefield. Napoleon gave orders for its immediate recapture. But the French and Saxon attack failed with heavy losses. Shit. Oh no. The Austrians had their own problems. He's actually just bolted yeah. him. Charles, knowing he faced a superior enemy, had decided his only chance of victory lay in an all-out dawn attack. He was relying on his brother, Archduke John, reaching him with 13,000 reinforcements. In time to support the attack on it's the not left. Well, is it? No, this is but mate. It's all just. There was still no sign of him. One thing is added on top of it, the other to make it a bad situation for both sides. Effect. It's it just is just a massive just... snowball effect. It's just so interesting, and it's it's interesting to see one of um, Napoleon's commanders not actually doing what he's asked for. Yes, like he just decided um, to go and just do it himself for a treat. Yeah, and because of that, he's now lost a crucial point. Yeah, and he couldn't even take it back. Obviously, we weren't aware of the battle situation. Yeah, so reaching him with thirteen thousand reinforcements. You know, but yeah, in time to support the attack on the left. But by dawn, there was still no sign of him. What's more, as the Fourth is, Corps began its assault on I have Hoffman, no clue, on man. Time, I'm just so interested. Third Corps, which had received its orders late, was still getting into position, holding up the entire Austrian right wing. Charles had to tell Fourth Corps to abort its unsupported attack until the other corps were ready. Hmm. With the Austrians paralyzed by delays, at 10 a.m., Davout began his attack. Okay. A fierce infantry battle erupted in the village of Markgraf Neusiedl, while in the fields, dragoons and hussars fought a giant whirling cavalry battle as each side tried to outflank the other. Mm. Davout's corps took the village, though they couldn't stop the Austrians withdrawing to a strong new position on the Wagram escarpment. Meanwhile, a serious threat had developed to Napoleon's left flank and rear. Klinau's 6th Corps had driven back the outnumbered Shit. French, I with some units advancing coming. as far as Essling, dangerously close to Napoleon's vital river crossings. Napoleon urgently needed to reinforce his left flank, but he was also determined to hold back his reserves for a decisive attack. So he ordered Massena's 4th Corps to march across the battlefield and reinforce the left. A huge redeployment like this, right in front of the enemy, was high risk. So Marshal Bessier was ordered to lead a cavalry attack straight okay. against the enemy centre. Good plan. Good plan. Were high. Even Marshal Bessier had his horse killed under him mm. to the alarm of his men. But the enemy was kept busy while 4th Corps completed its redeployment and forced Klinau's corps to fall back. Any trooper who isn't dead by 30 is a coward, and I don't anticipate exceeding that length of time. I'm not even going to attempt his name. <laughs> General killed at age 33. Mate, General Anthony Lazale killed at Wagram, age 33. Any that's trooper who insane. isn't dead by 30 is a coward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any trooper who... That, that's insane. It's insane. <laughs> Napoleon now assembled a grand battery of more than 80 cannon in the centre of the battlefield. This was one of Napoleon's trademark tactics concentration of artillery to blast the enemy line and pave the way for a decisive French attack. 
Mm. Okay. The Grand Battery fired an estimated 15,000 rounds, setting Ooh. light to the cornfields. Around 1 pm, Napoleon ordered a general attack. As Davout continued to batter at the enemy flank, 4th Corps would advance on the left, 2nd Corps on the right. Mm. While in the centre, General Macdonald would lead forward 8,000 men of the Army of Italy, formed up in a giant three-sided square to secure his flanks. Insane. But okay. despite the terrible French cannonade, Austrian 3rd Corps and Grenadiers of the Reserve met the French advance with torrential fire. Macdonald's giant square was cut to pieces, its men mowed down en masse by cannon fire, and the attack stalled. Oh my. Yeah. But the Austrian army, battered by relentless French attacks, was near breaking point. I'll give it to him, I'll hold Every off. part of they the are, line yeah. was under pressure from the French. Archduke Charles, determined above all to keep his army intact, ordered a retreat. The Austrian withdrawal wow. was disciplined and well executed. Napoleon had his victory. Okay, but they got away with the majority of their men. But his army was also so shattered by fatigue and heavy losses, it was unable to launch any effective pursuit. Yeah, yeah. No way he was chasing them down. There was no way. It was obvious that you were not at Wagram, Napoleon to a minister who mocked the Austrians. Also, he's defending, he's defending the Austrians in this fight now. So he's, his thought process has clearly changed about them yeah. quite quickly. They he realised that they the can put up a fight. Yeah. Was a brutal slugging match, the biggest and bloodiest battle yet seen in European history. Insane. French victory came at unprecedented cost. Whoa. An estimated 37,500. Oh my god. 27,000 wounded or dead. French captured, uh, missing or captured, 10,000. 10, the Austrians near 20. Yeah, man. That's insane. 7,500 casualties against 41,500 Austrian. Four days later, French troops caught up with the retreating Austrians at Znaim. Okay. As the fighting escalated, Charles knew he could not withstand the French a second time, and asked for a ceasefire. But he had not consulted his older brother, Emperor Francis, who was furious when he heard the news. Oh. Not least because long-awaited British support was finally on the way. Three weeks after the Battle of Znaim, the largest amphibious force Britain had ever assembled, 35 ships of the line and 39,000 troops oh. landed at Volcheren Island on the Scheldt estuary. Its aim was to destroy French shipping and naval stores. Mm. But following the successful bombardment and capture of Vlissingen, British commanders let the initiative slip from their grasp their force was bottled up by French troops on the marshy Dutch coast, where it was decimated by fever and dysentery. Uh, About 4,000 died. Mm, Many more became permanent invalids. Mm, the survivors were evacuated back to England in December. Permanent invalids, man. Emperor Francis, informed of the British debacle, and persuaded by his generals that Austria couldn't fight on, this is insane. made peace with Napoleon. Sorry about In October, as well. Austria signed the Treaty of Schönbrunn, giving up territory to the French Empire, Bavaria, Saxony, hmm. the Duchy of Warsaw, and Russia. In total, the Austrian Empire was stripped of three and a half million subjects, forced to pay an indemnity, limit its army to 150,000 <gasps> men, <laughs> and join Napoleon's continental system, Mate. which meant ending all trade you do what I say now. merchants. <laughs> Archduke Charles, meanwhile, one of Napoleon's more skilled opponents, had fallen out so bitterly with his brother, Emperor Francis, that he never held active command again. Whoa. Napoleon had won another crushing victory, but there were worrying signs for the French Emperor. His enemies were learning. 
while he would increasingly have to rely on young conscripts to fill the gaps left by veterans killed or wounded on campaign. Mm. It's always Few the could issue. have guessed in 1809, but Napoleon had just fought his last victorious campaign. Oh, oh dear, oh dear indeed. You can now. So that, that was his last great victory. victory, apparently. So I'm looking forward to oh see God. what they have next for us, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to see how bad it goes. I do indeed. If you guys are enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. A link for Epic History's content will be in the description box down below. But other than that, we're going to catch it in the next one. In a bit.